The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, This one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether, with 10,000 troops, he can successfully oppose another king, advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I have to admit, I really enjoy reading gospel readings like this, really scripture readings from Old and New Testaments like this, precisely because it's so challenging. I don't really get what Jesus is trying to say. It makes me think to say, well, I may be reading things a little bit wrongly if I think that Jesus is telling me to ignore my family, to ignore the world, to ignore all of the good things that God has made. It seems on the surface, get rid of it, ignore it, hate it even. Only then can you love God. Well, I think we've got that backwards to a large degree. Because you see, I think what Jesus is getting at is if we don't love God first, then all of those other things, all of those other relationships in our lives, well, they're always going to come up short. We're always going to be like the builder who doesn't have enough resources. Because we don't. We're always going to be like the king without enough troops because we don't have that much power and authority by ourselves. God is the only one that fills us up and gives us what we need. And if we don't look to that first, then again, everything else falls apart. And I think that's why St. Paul in our reading says that we must do everything for the glory of God. We must be imitators of Christ of Paul as he is of Christ. And remember, Saint, both St. Saint Paul and our Lord Jesus Christ gave all of their beings, all of their selves to the glory of God. If he's calling us to, to live like that, well, I think we need to ask ourselves, myself included, who do I trust? Who do I love? Who do I put my hope in? Is it me? Is it my father and mother and brothers and sisters? All good things, don't get me wrong, but limited. Or, or, do I do everything for the glory of God? And I think that's the wonderful example of St. Ignatius, whose uh, feast we celebrate today, offers to us. Father Wigenka yesterday reminded us all of that wonderful moment when, right after his conversion, he went to the, uh, to the monastery at, uh, at Montserrat and laid down his sword, laid down his dagger, laid down all of his protection as he was about to set out on this journey. He didn't trust in anything except the power and the protection of our Lord. That's hard to do. That's confusing. confusing. I don't get it, a lot like this gospel, but I think that's part of the point. In a lot of ways, we're not really supposed to get it because we're supposed to trust that God is with us. That God will be there giving us his glory as long as we do everything for his glory.